Hello, everybody. This is Monday, July the 3rd, and I am John Blank, Chief Equity Strategist and Economist at Zach's Investment Research. Uh, today, we're going to talk about top basic materials ETFs, exchange traded funds. This is going to be an analysis of the passive way to invest in the basic material stocks. We have three parts today. Part one will be top basic material ETFs, the story of them, their inceptions, their assets under management, companies that are in them, the index they track, uh, lots of material that you really do need to know. Part two, the ETF valuation story, how it's playing out, whether it's a good time to buy or not. Part three, we'll get into basic material smart beta ETFs. There's a factor and fundamental and equal weight uh, ability to change the way you do this. It's a very small number of uh, very low, or actually a high number of uh, very low asset under management uh, ETFs to talk about. So that's where we're going to go today. Um, I think this is fascinating. I think it's well worth your time. Um, probably the most interesting of the three as we get into it. I think you'll agree with me. So first off, these are my views. I am a PhD and they are not necessarily the views of Sachs Investment Research. All right, so like I said, today is gonna to be basic materials ETFs. And we're gonna get through the first part of this, which is just the assets under management, typically called AUM. Now I wanna point out that we did this in June of 2023. So this is gonna be what the, the column here is for the 6th of June, and this is the end of June. This is a percentage change from that period of time. Not particularly useful, but what is useful is the names of the issuers and the categories. That's what I want to go through first. So let's go over here to the categories. First off, I just did the really big ones. Broad materials, of course, that's going to be a lot of them. Broad materials, is people think of basic materials as just these. In fact, this is only a fraction of that. It's a large fraction, but it's only a fraction. Home builders are in here. Home builders are considered in basic materials. Whether you like it or not, it's a good question. Metals and mining, particularly gold and silver, gold in particular is huge in this area, actually bigger than broad materials. So you do need to think about metals and mining separate from what people do think is in this sector more broadly, which is broad materials. Then of course, we've got all kinds of these smaller groups. Like I said, gold miners, silver miners, and uranium miners. Those are the big ones. So I've basically centered on all these bigger categories. The only other one that's missing is agribusiness. And there's only one ETF that I'm gonna talk about a lot today, but that comes there. So over here, in terms of assets under management, notice that I have some names you probably haven't seen as much. Flex shares, Global X, and Direxion. Direxion is a directional betting, uh, bull 2Xs, bull 3Xs, and bear 2Xs, and bear 3Xs. Tends to be a gold miners like to play these bold, bold gold. When gold moves, people play the direction. So you're going to learn that. Global X, company that uh, has more uh, different types of companies and sector selection than you're going to see, and as, as well as flex shares, we'll talk about them. And they've actually succeeded in this business where State Street, Vanguard, and BlackRock typically dominate ETF flows. Now we've got two that are actually doing quite well in this area. That's unique. Keep that in mind. Okay. So like I said, who's at the top here? Vanek Gold Miners. Uh, this is now at 12 billion under management and gold miners, not just gold, but gold miners is what people play. So this is to keep in mind, the GDX is the Vanek Gold Miners. And then there's the Flex Shears Morningstar. So Flex Shears is a morning start thing, global upstream natural resources. So way upstream, not downstream, upstream. So this is a very different business. You can see gold miners and upstream natural resources, the biggest two, uh, but they're very, very, very different. And then of course we get to the spider fund, which is now the oldest in 1998. This is a 25 year old fund, it's only 6 billion under management. So Flex Shears upstream natural resources and gold mining, are much newer, 2011 and 2006, but they're now much greater in, in assets and remainders. So people like to play this more than they like the spider. Now, what's Global X doing? Well, their biggest one is this lithium battery one. Uh, this is another one, lithium and battery production gets thrown here. That only started in 2010. 
market. That's one of the big ones. They've got copper miners, they've got uranium miners, and they've got silver miners. So Global X, as you can see, has a lot of different pretty good size ETFs. They're all about three billion, and a billion, and a billion, and down here just under a billion. So they basically have a, a, a suite of ETFs. Then, of course, we've got this Horizon Kinetics Inflation Beneficiaries. Fascinating. Uh, a billion under management. Inflation beneficiaries. So worth looking into the stocks they like for inflation beneficiaries. Obviously, inflation is declining, but if it does not return, uh, it's one to look into the stocks. The other one out here that's fascinating is iShares North American Natural Resources. This is actually quite old, too. So here's your iShares one. Here's your Vanguard one. Here's your Spider one. Those are your old traditional ones. They all started in you know, doing this 20, 25 years ago, and now we've got all these new players coming into this market. Okay, over here, I just want to point out the direction ones. I've got basically five of them. Bolt 2X is the biggest for gold and junior gold miners, so smaller ones. Um, then we've got Bull 3X, Home Builders, Bear 2X Gold Miners, and Bear 2X the Junior Gold Miners. So these are the inverse of those, and then we've got the home builder. So as I said, gold miners, gold miners are a big trade for relatively small ETFs. There's not a lot of people in here, but what people, when people play the gold miners, they like to double down on them through the leverage, bear or bull. Just keep that in mind. All right, basic materials ETFs. Again, I've put the big three here. XLB is the material select spider. That's the spider one. And yeah, we actually do like this right now. We do like this one. Vanguard materials. Also, um, reasonably good tracking right now. We do like Vanguard materials. Pump construction. Again, it varies. We have come up and down on this one. But in general, we have liked the home construction business out of the hole from early 2020 to 21. Then we get this one grid, which comes up clean and looks good. It's actually a totally different business. First Trust Clean Edge Smart Grid. Smart Grid. So you can see this is a totally different thing than these major players. Home Construction, Vanguard Materials, Material Select, and Clean Edge Smart Grid. Very different. So look at this one. Um, and look into the areas that play out for you here. This is going to be uh, worth thinking about and worth knowing about. Okay, so let's keep going. Top 10 holdings. Okay, so again, I'm going to throw out some names here. Gunner, Flux Shears, Upstream Natural Resources. This is one way to talk about the Morningstar one with 7 billion. And you can see it has a lot of different names that are uh, all over the place. I mean, you get BHP Group, you get Exxon Mobil, Chevron, Nutrien, Shell. There's a lot of oil and energy places. So Upstream does mean the energy players. I think that is typically the plastics types groups. MOO, Vanek Agribusiness. Down here, you've got Deer, Zoetis, Bear, Kubota, Tyson. So agribusiness and upstream natural resources, totally different uh, ETFs. Now, here we have global copper miners. Those are, you know, beginning from Ivanhoe, London, Grupo Mexico, Glencore, BHP Freeport McMurrowran, which is a name we all have heard about in copper a lot. And now let's take a look at these bigger ones. So in the bigger ones, the top holding is Lind. Lind has been holding these stocks up uh, and I mean, doing pretty good. Air Products and Chemicals is another second big one. And Sherwin-Williams is the third big one. So VAW and XLB don't look very different. They're basically the same. So these two old ones are not too different. This one is the home builders one. Obviously, Sherwin Williams makes it in here too. But the basic point here is, you know, now you get DR Hart and Lenar, Home, you know, Home Depot, Toll, Builders for Resource, the typical names of home builders. Up here, that's the gold miners. Um, you know, you can always pick out gold miners with when you get new miners. Inros, Barrick, those are the names that are typically in there. And of course, this is the lithium ion area. This is very, you know, across the board here. Again, Albemarle will be your top one, but there's Tesla, there's Panasonic, there's BYD, CDK, Rivian, very different names. And again, of course, this is a home builder one. And there's your gunner one. 
flex GR's upstream natural resources. I should say that's there. This is GNR, this is GUNR, which are different ones. Okay, let's keep going. All right, top sector percentage allocations. I just want to point out, note the wide difference in process industry concentration. Process industry for processing these energy or materials things is going to be the key differentiating factor to look for. So VAW has 71% process industries. XLB has 75% process industries. So this is what I'm talking about. Those big old ones that first started out were only in process. Look what happens with Gunner. Now down to 28% here. GNR also 28%. Lithium also 28%. So these three are in a different category. And then down here, the home builders is absolutely nothing. There's three and a half, four percent. And then agribusiness is 45%. And you see, home builders have very little of this. The traditional ones will have three quarters of this. And then you have these, these, these new ones, which are a quarter of this. So you can see that people are really changing the sectors that, that play out here in dramatic ways. This is very important to understand when you're picking, is that what we might call basic materials, the top of the slideshow is probably best known as process industries with lots of other stuff going on. All right, dividend adjusted prices. So here's your XLB. We've talked about this one a lot, and it actually has done fairly well. Here's your smart grid. So again, this has been taking off since 2020, but it's been on a nice roll. It's very highly priced now. I probably wouldn't get into it now, but it's been a great trade. Very different. Uh, you think you would agree with a smart grid versus traditional materials ETF. And now look at this. Vanguard, but without Lind and Air Products and Chemicals, I wonder how this would look. Uh, it's really trading those names more than anything. And down here is, is kind of the proof of that IYM. This is at 133 versus 181. So, um, Again, it's all about stocks and industry concentration when you're actually looking at these things. Uh, you know, it depends on, you know, you get these names like copper, uranium, I haven't done that well. So same is true for the silver names down here. Here's the uranium. Now. So gold, again, not so good. It's, it's in these other names that seem to be worth your time in exploring. Okay, so valuations. Let's get into the story of how they, these things are tracking in the valuation story. Number one, again, XLB is that's your, and your VAW are going to be your traditional, you know, bigger names. There's your home construction and your Vanguard. So let's talk Vanguard. There it is. It definitely has come down in to the 15s from the 30s. Uh, that's just because of the COVID thing. And it's probably just a little undervalued to the S&P 500. XLB, not so different. What I found interesting here is grid. Grid actually is coming down in its valuations. It's, it's certainly a, a growth sector. You get in the mid-20s with a, with a PE ratio. That's a growth stock. These are 15 and 16. The grid is a 25. Now, FX, First Trust Materials Alpha Dex is rising. The only one I've got rising, that what that tells you, they're getting alpha out of chasing momentum names. That's clearly the case here. Uranium. Um, big shutdown of the mines and then opening, and now it's coming back a little bit. But very different story for copper and uranium, and then of course the agribusiness is in there in the 15 is area. So, uh, what do I learn about this? Again, very specific to the construction of the ETFs, have to pay attention to it, um, and think through whether your trade is really matching what you think it is in terms of companies and sectors. Price to book. Here's your XLB. Again, that's this one doing just under three and VAW actually down in the two and a halves. So we keep that as our kind of our benchmark. Then let's take a look at this one. Grid is actually doing pretty well at price to book. It's actually right in there with them. FXZ, the first trust one, is actually even better. Uh, FXZ clearly does uh, manage to keep the price to book pretty good and price to value. Price to earnings going up, price of book going down. Interesting. FXX keeps this one in mind. Look at their holdings. Uh, same with grid. I would probably look at the holdings of grid very closely. Um, again, uranium here, copper, and the agribusiness one move, you know, for cow, right? So 
Anyways, I put that name up here, First Trust Materials Alpha Dex. Keep that in mind. All right, so now we've got another couple names. Here's your first trust name. What's fun beta is somewhat over 1.2. Here's your grid. We've been talking about that. That's also a 1.2 beta. So those do outperform the market by about 20%. And now we've got some iShares name you probably don't know about. Ring, iShares Gold Miners, which is a low beta name. The gold miners in that ring are low beta. And then down here, Veggie is also low beta. That's their ag producers. So you've got two choices here, things that are 1.2-ish, you know, beating the market a little bit, and then these ones, Ring and Veggie, underperforming the market a little bit in terms of market beta, beta, not alpha. All right, so let's get into smart beta. Smart beta is trying to get a little better edge on the market by picking a little tighter. So what do we mean by this? Here's the types of strategies that can be played. First off, equally weighted. Instead of price and market cap, they'll just pick these equal weights and hold these this way. Um, as you can tell with the concentration we talk about, this is quite different. Fundamentally weighted. Of course, that's earnings, profits, revenue. That's what we mean here. You can do the Zach's thing here on a fundamentally weighted thing. Factor weighted. This is going to be balance sheet. Underpriced and valuations are smaller companies that are growing. Factor is different than fundamental, than low vol. Stocks where the, the price fluctuations over historic period are lower. Those are typical smart beta things. Here's the key takeaways and the pros and cons. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this today, uh, but you can read this through later and understand that basically it's a rules-based system. The stock screen, effectively, and it's a form of stock screen that has four different ways that are, the screen has been done. So if we look over here, you know, in terms of the AUMs, none of these are more than 250 million. Some of these are actually extremely small, below 100 million. I don't think we should bother with. But let's take a look at Invesco Basic Materials Momentum ETF. That's PYZ right here. So actually, Momentum ETFs and Basic Materials did pretty well. And it's, of course, where do we find it? It's in lithium. That's the battery production. So again, a name where battery production is pulled up is actually doing quite well. And of course, we know why because battery production is surging. And there are other names that are in here um, all over the place, worth just coming from here to there, seeing what you can learn about this whole thing, just because there's a lot of strategies involved. It's very interesting. But again, I think only the base materials momentum one is worth studying on its own. All right. Thanks for attending. I hope you liked today. I think this is fascinating. Um, Really a much more complicated structure than the ETFs that I'm sure you thought about before I began this study. And that means you learned a lot. You learned a lot about how the strategies are playing out, the history of this area, and how many different uh, ways to look into this market space there is. Uh, great to do this. Great to talk about this. So the slides are key here uh, more than ever, and you can get a hold of them at 866 seven nine four six zero six five send us an email at strategy call at zaxpro.com or find us on the web at www.zaxpro.com those are the typical ways i'll put those out there and leave those out there 866-794-6065 strategy call at zaxpro.com critical to get the slides folks on this type of thing as you can tell there was a lot of granularity of course, you can find us at LinkedIn on Zach's Professional Services and on Twitter at, at ZA Tools. Well, that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it.